Okay, so in this video, we will be continuing on the beginner's guide to SDL2 and C++. So if you're just starting with this video, you're going to want to go to github.com, Programming Rainbow, Beginner's Guide to SDL2 in CPP. You want to clone that repository. Since this is the eighth video, we, you want to go inside uh, the folder of the seventh video right here. And you want to take the seventh video source code and move it up into the, the normal source directory. And that will be where we start off with today, is what we ended off with in the seventh video. So I will show you real quick where we ended off with. And so we have our um, true type font bouncing around the screen. We have our icon that we can move around, our player icon. We have the background color that we can change every time we press the space bar. We have a title up there called Player Sprite. Um, I did forget in the last video to, to name it Player Sprite and the, to change the string, but I did it after the video, so you'll need to do that as well if you want to keep up. And we do have a title icon that is loaded, but we can't see it because I'm, I'm in this uh, tiling window manager, but in a floating window manager, you, you would be able to see it. Okay, so in this video, it's all going to be about sound. We're going to be loading um we're going to be initializing the mixer module we're going to be opening an audio device we're going to be loading sound effects and playing them loading music and playing that and also being able to pause it all that stuff so it's quite a lot of content to get through so i'm going to have a like a whole bunch of tabs open and we're just going to close them as we as we mark them off so the very first thing that we need to do is we need to initialize this new module, this mixer module. And this one is a bit different because it's it, capital M lowercase i x, where as all the other ones would be three capital letters, this one's only the capital M. So it's mix in it. So to do this, we will need to include the header file for this, and we will also need to add the linker in when we compile it. But the flags on this one work just like they do on the other ones, where the image one, where we could add different ones in, so we are only going to be working with AUG files, but if you want to use other ones, you can add them in using the pipe. And we'll set that up so that you can use whatever ones that you want to use for your project. So this is going to look very much like what we did with the image. So I'm not going to explain all that because I did explain it in the image video with how the masking works and how they're, um, they use the bitwise or. So I'm just going to gloss over it in this one, but it's using the exact same setup where it's taking flags in, it's give, giving flags out, and then you have to compare them. And yeah, so we're going to set it up exactly the way we did. So the first thing we're going to do is, um, we don't need the scan code here. I don't know how that got there. But we do need to add this include and this SDL2 um, SDL underscore mixer dot H. So we need to add that. That's going to give us access to the mixer module. And then we need to initialize it. We're going to do that in the SDL, the initialize SDL function right here. And like I said, it is very much exactly like the image ones. What we're going to do is I do want to use just the, I, I, I just need mix in it aug. Okay. So I'm going to create a, a variable here. We'll call it int mix flags we'll have that equal to mix init aug now if you wanted to use other ones you could just put a single pipe and then just add the ones that you want to use and that will be able to extend what you need and i since this works exactly like this one i'm just going to use this exact same just going to yank that and bring it over here paste it Now this is not, uh, this is mix, not image. So and it's just capital M with the lowercase i x. And it's going to be mixed flags. And we're, ma we're masking it with mixed flags. And then we're comparing it to the mixed flags. And if we have an error, we'll say error initializing SDL mixer. 
and this is going to be mix get error, not um, not capitalized. But there we go. Mix get error, and that is the way we initialize the mixer. And now, since we've initialized it, we're going to shut it down as well. So it'll be mix quit, and that should be right here. Right here is mix quit, and it's just a void function. It has no parameters. So since it's the last thing we initialize, it's the first thing that we're shutting down. Okay, so I'm just going to compile this real, real quick to make sure it compiles. Nothing is going to be changed in our project, but it will be loading up the, the mixer module and then unloading it. And we do need to add a linker flag in for this. So it's going to look the exact same, but we need to add minus L, STL2, underscore mixer. And that should be the linker that we need to add. Okay. I'll just show you what it looks like if we don't add that. We'll get a linker error. Yep. Okay. So we're compiling it, and then I'll just run it, although nothing has changed. Okay. Perfect. So it's not enough just to initialize Mixer. We actually need to open an audio device. So let's do that now. So I'm going to start closing these tabs down. Okay, so Mix Open Audio, and it has some parameters. It has a frequency, it has a format, it has channels, and it has a chunk size. Now I can tell you it's a bit frustrating, but the first three of these have a safe default that's already that already has a macro. Um, defined, but it is not mentioned on this page. And I don't know why it's not mentioned on this page, but other people use it. Um, it's definitely described in the header file, the sdl2 underscore mixer.h file. It's, it's in there, but it's not described here. So they're called mix default frequency format and channels. So it's a macro. It's, it's mix default frequency, mix default format, and mix default channels. So the frequency, I think, I believe the default is, is set to 44,100 44, hertz. And the, I'm not sure if it's a signed 16-bit. So this is kind of a, you kind of have to dive into this, what each one of them means. But it's either 44,000 or 44,100. Um, but it's whatever their safe default is. I'm going to use the macro for that. The um, the format style talks about basically how the hardware is kind of configured, and whether it's 16-bit or 32-bit, signed or, or um, floating. Again, I use their safe default, so that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use the macro that predefines it. The channels, where is it? Channels up here. This talks about channels as in a mono or stereo, and their default is stereo, so I'm going to use that. And then chunk size is uh, something different. This is the, you've probably seen this if you've ever worked with audio. Okay, so the chunk size. The audio device chunk size is the number of sample frames. One sample per frame for mono, two samples per frame in a stereo setup that are fed to the device at once. The lower the number, the lower the latency. But you risk dropouts if it gets too low. So they, they say it's safe to have um, 2048 or 1024. So what this is, is if... If you have too many um, samples, uh, basically uh, too, too few frames to deal with your sample size, you get dropouts. And when you get dropouts, it'll, it'll, set, it'll make a crackling sound. And it'll be really, it'll be really noticeable. So at, at 2048, I can actually hear the latency. I can hear the delay in sound. It's, it's enough where my ears pick it up. At 1,024, I, I don't really notice. I'm not really paying attention. I don't really notice. It's just fine. But if you were to drop this down to, like, say, 512 or 256, depending on your hardware or lower, you're going to start hearing crackling, more crackling, until it's just all crackling. So I'm going to use the 1,024, and I've never had a problem with that. But if you do hear crackling, you could try 2,048, or you could try lower numbers. Um, I'm going to use this 1,024. So... For these three, for the frequency, I'm going to use the macro for the format. Well, sorry, it's this one up here. For frequency, I'm going to use the macro. 
for the format, I'm going to use the macro. And for the channels, I'm going to use the macro. But I know that this is stereo, and I believe this is 44, 1, 44,100 hertz. Um, at this chunk size, I'm going to use 1,024. So this is going to open an audio device for us. Now, the mixer has something else that they call channels, and that has to do with chunks being played as sound effects. And that is not the same thing as mono and stereo, these channels. So that will be a different channels that is using the same word. But for opening an audio device, we need frequency, format, channels, and chunk size. And this can fail. And if it fails, it's going to turn negative 1. If it succeeds, it's going to be 0. So we're going to wrap this in an if statement and open an audio device. So right under here, it's going to be in the same section. And this initialize SDL. Uh, we're going to wrap this in an if statement and open the auto. So it's mix, open audio. And these are the, these are the macros. Now, again, they are defined in the header file. So if you open up the header file and read it, you will see um, what I'm talking about. I didn't, I didn't open up the header file to, to show you here. So yeah, it's here. So if I were to, maybe in, in, if I were to open this up, we're going to see in here some macros being set. So we have mix default frequency, here it is, it's set to 44.1, a mix default format, mix default channel. Now these are, these are meant for you to use. I, I have no idea why they're not on the page. Somebody has overlooked this. And you will see other people's projects using these. So these are predefined. So they're, they're pointing to other, you know, they're setting up other things. But I'm just going to use these macros right here because they're safe. But there isn't one for the chunk size. So this is the actual header file that is uh, the C header file for mixer.h. Okay. So yeah, that's what I'm going to use. So that's mix. And this is all capital. Mix default frequencies. First one. Mix default format. And mix default uh, channel. And then it's 1024 is what I'm going to use for the other one. Okay. And this should return zero on success. If it's anything other than zero, it's going to trip our if statement. And we, are, we will throw our runtime error. I'll yank this, put it in here. So this is a, a mix error. This is also mix errors. And this is an initializing SDL mixer. This one will be opening audio. Okay, so error opening audio. So this is opening the mix, uh, opening an audio, but we also need to close the audio just like we closed the mixer. So that function is mix close audio. And it's uh, just void. It's returning nothing. has no input. So we'll, we'll do that right up here. Next close audio. Okay. So let's just make sure that that compiles. There it is. Okay. Now, I do want to, before I forget, I always forget, I want to change the title up here, right here, to Sound Effects and Music. Okay. So, I'm going to close this one and close this one. Now, we're moving down the list. Okay, so now we get to load an actual audio file. So the, what we're going to start with is a sound effect. So there's two different types of audio files that we are kind of, they have sound effects and they have streaming kind of music. 
So the music one, you can play just one music song. And the audio one, you can play simultaneous sound effects uh, for the chunk one. So we're going to have mix underscore chunk of the type. And also mix underscore music is going to be a type. So first we're working with the chunks. This is sound effects. Okay, so this is a very simple one. This is just a function. It's going to take the file and it's going to return us a heap allocated chunk. So we're going to need a smart pointer. So we know that the type is a chunk. And then we also need to know how to clean it up because we need to define the deleter in our unique pointer. And the way that we clean up a chunk is mix free chunk. And it's a bit bizarre in the mixer, the names don't match up. So it's mix load wave. And even though we're not loading a wave file, we're, we can load any type of file, it's just called load wave. And then mix free chunk, it's the way to free it. So load wave loads a chunk and mix free chunk freeze it. So that's how we need to do that. So we're going to make the smart pointer for this. And then we are going to use this function to reset that smart pointer. So right down here, I'm going to go STD. And this is unique pointer. And the type is SDL chunk. And now we need our um, we need to get the type of the function that is going to be our deleter. So we'll do the declare uh, declare type. And here's our function pointer. Free chunk. Okay. And we, I'm going to show you this, the two sound effects we're going to have. One's going to say C++. Um, our good cult leader, Bjorn, is going to tell us how to say C++. And then the other one's going to say SDL. So I'm going to name this one C++. So I called it CPP sound. So that's fine. Let's just do that. And I'm going to now um, copy this one. Um, use of undeclared identifier. Oh, it's not STL chunk. It's mix chunk. And this is mix. Mix free music. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to copy this. Because there's two of them. So I'm just going to make them both at the same time. And we'll call this one STL sound. Okay, and now we need to initialize them both here. And this one will be, I'm just going to let my formatter format it for me when I'm done. So this will be CPP sound. That thing's messing me up right there. Okay, okay. so this would be null pointer. And we're cleaning it up with mix free chunk. And then the next one will be SDL sound. And that's also null pointer. And it's also mix. Chunk. Okay, let's see if that cleans it up for me. Yep, there we go. So we have two new unique pointers, and these are both for mix, uh, mix chunk type, and mix free chunk is the, the deleter. And we are setting them both to null. Now we, we're going to go down to our load media section, and this is where we're going to be loading our sound effects. Let's go look at those functions. So we're done with the mix load wave and mix free chunk. So we have, um, this is too early for this. Oh, no, no, sorry. Uh, I just closed mix load wave. We, we needed that. I closed it. But we know what it's going to do. It's going to return a pointer, or if it errors, it's going to return null. So let's do that. And this is going to be a reset on a 
unique pointer. So it's going to be this. Um, CPP sound dot reset. And it is mix load and it's wave all capital. And this is for no matter what kind of audio that you're loading. If it's a chunk, it's always mix load wave. Maybe initially it was a wave file way back when, but it's just the name of the function. now. So we need the relative path. So it's in sounds and it's called CPP and it has a capital C in it. And it's an AUG file. So that is going to load the sound and then we need to check it to make sure that it does exist. So I'm going to yank this one right here. And we're checking the CPP sound. And this is a mix one, so right away down here, this needs to be mixed. Uh, we're going to say loading chunk. Loading chunk. So error loading chunk, we get that. That is everything we need there. Just looking for errors. Don't see any yet. So this same thing, we're gonna we need to do this twice because we need to load the other sound effect. I'm just gonna yank the whole thing. And this one is SDL sound. SDL sound and the file is capital SDL and it's a dot .og file. And we're checking SDL sound. And the error message will be still be error loading chunk and it's still a, a mix get error. That's all perfect. So this should load our sound and our smart pointer so they'll be unloaded for us. So let's check that out real quick. Make sure that that still compiles. Okay. Nothing's changed. That's fine. And we can check to see if we have any memory leaks by doing a much more complicated. Um, let, let me see. I was checking it beforehand. So this right here um, compiles it with a whole bunch of stuff turned on. It warns me about all kinds of stuff um, to make sure I'm doing everything the best way that I can do it. And I'm also, I, I will use this later in games, but for this little demo, I'm not really using it. But I also tell it to warn me about all kinds of stuff. And then I tell it to also turn all warnings into errors. So the compiling just stops. If you have any warning, it just doesn't go any further. And I also have this F sanitizer address and F sanitizer um, address used after scope. This kind of stuff here. And I'm compiling to the wrong path. Let me change this to source. And what this will do is if I run the program, obviously it's could warn me when compiling, but also because of these F sanitizers, it, when I run it, if I close it down and I didn't free all the memory, it'll actually tell me that. So let's compile that. And what do we got going on here? Missing declaration. Oh, really? I thought I had that. I, missing this? I, should, I forward declared this. Okay, let's let's find out what's going on here because I as far as I know, this should be it's right there. Wait, what? No previous tech. Maybe I've misspelled something. Yeah, I did. Yep. This is not spelled correctly. It, there there needs it's an IA. Okay, that's good that we um that I went to show you this. Right here it's IA and down here it is not. Where is it? Okay, that means when I'm calling it, I also must be calling it wrong. Yeah, I did it down here too. So it was working this whole time. It just was the the forward declaration was spelled right, and all the other usage of it were spelled wrong, so it was still using it. That's nice that we caught that. Okay, so that is compiled. So 
no other warnings or anything else. And now when I run it, if it closes down without freeing all memory, it's going to tell me about this. So it's loaded up, you know, images, it's loading sound. So now if I escape, um, it, it just closed cleanly. But if it didn't, it would give me this whole report on the different memory items that were not freed when it closed. So it's nice for it to actually show it. It's kind of hard to, because I'm using the smart pointers, but if I was in normal C, I could just easily not free one of the, one of the heap allocations and it would immediately show it to me. But you can see it's quite helpful to turn on all those warnings because I already caught something that's been in my code in all the videos and I never realized it. It was a minor thing. It was my forward declaration wasn't actually the real forward declaration, but it still is not good. Okay, so um, we've loaded our audio. So now let's hear what the audio sounds like. I want to hear Bjorn, his beautiful, angelic voice telling us about C++. So the way we can do this is we can use mix play channel and we have to choose the channel we want to play on. We choose the chunk that we want to play and then we choose how many times we want it to loop. And then this will return what channel it's being played on. Okay. So the channel, um, we, we have eight channels we can choose from, but we don't have to choose one. We can just tell it to say, you know what, pick the first available channel. And so we can put a negative one in there. I return switch channel, play, well, is it saying it? If you specify channel negative one, yeah, first free channel. So we are gonna use negative one here. And we are not gonna check if this errors because what can happen is, is I can play seven sound effects and all, all will play at the same time without one of them needing to quit. And I can play eight sound effects and they'll all play at the same time. But when I try to play nine, it's going to fail. And it's not a big deal. That sound just won't play because all the, all the eight channels are taken up. But when one of those ends, you know, the, the sound effects only last half a second or a second. When one of those ends, now it is available to play when we want to play a sound again. So it is not a big deal if this errors. That just means it wasn't able to get a, a channel available. And it's totally fine. It, it's, it's no big deal. You might not even notice that it happened. So I'm definitely not checking the error on this at all. Um, I'm going to put negative one for the channel to pick the first channel. I'm going to choose the audio that I want to play. And then I'm going to put zero here for loops because I don't want it to loop. It's going to play just one time and no loops. Okay, so these are for sound effects. So this, we're going to use this mix play channel. And where I'm going to put this is where we are changing the background the, the function that changes the background, or sorry, we didn't even make a function. We put it right into the, into the, um, the event. So right here, this function that changes the background color that we put right into the event, and we didn't, we didn't pull it out into its own function. I'm just going to put another one here and I'm going to play a sound. I'm just going to tab this in. Okay. So we have, uh, is it negative one here? Negative one, the chunk and the loops. So the negative one for the channel. And the chunk that we want to play is this. And it's going to be the C++ sound. And, but we do need to unwrap this. And then the looping, the amount of times we want it to loop is going to be zero. Okay. So this now should play the C++ sound whenever we press, press the space bar and change the background color. So let's test that. I'm going to recompile it. Well, we can recompile this way. It doesn't really matter. I'm pressing the space bar. C++. 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 I'm going to play it a bunch of times, um, so it's going to be on top of itself four times. C++. 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 Okay. 
that was our leader's beautiful voice. Um, now, I also wanted to say SDL every time the SDL text bounces off the one of the walls. So we're going to use the exact same thing. We'll just change the, the chunk in there to the SDL one. So I'm going to yank this, and I'm going to go into the text, the update text right here. And for each one of the each time one of these is triggered where it changes the direction, I'm going to play the sound. I'm going to tab this in, and then I'm going to change this to the SDL. Okay. Now I'm going to yank it again, and I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to put it in all four places. Okay, so now we should hear SDL every time that the SDL bounces off one of the walls. I'm just going to use the normal compiler because that one's super long. SDL, 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 SDL. Okay, that sounds like it's working perfectly. Okay, so that is how you play a sound effect, but we need to do one other thing. We we are um, so th these these smart pointers are actually clearing up their own memory, but I actually want to tell all the sound effects to stop playing before that happens. So the sequence of events goes like this. Let me let me go down here to the main. Um, so we, we're we're initializing SDL. That's bringing all the modules online, right? Then we're um in, we're instancing a game, we're initializing it, we're telling it to call its initializer, and we're telling it to load its media, and that's loading up the, that's loading up all the, um, sorry, the, the, the constructor is going to be creating the unique pointers for those objects. Initialize happens, then load media is going to reset those objects so that they're actually loaded with um, heap allocated pointers now. So they're loaded with heap allocated pointers. Now we run the game, and this is what happens on shutdown. When after run finishes, game goes out of scope. So what happens is the deconstructor gets called first. After the deconstructor gets called, then the smart pointers go out of scope. So their their deconstructors get called. That has all the the cleanup functions that clean up those. And then after that, this close SDL gets called. So First thing is the deconstructor. Second thing is the smart pointers go out of scope. And third thing is closing the SDL. Okay. So closing the SDL is we know it, it is closing the the audio and the quit. That's happening last. That's fine. Now we have the smart pointers going out of scope when the when when the after the deconstructor gets called, the smart pointers go out of scope. So before I start deallocating the the audio, I actually want to make sure that they're not playing, that they've stopped playing before I deallocate them. It, this is not the most important thing in the world, but I just want to do things the most correct way that I can. So there is a function called um, mix halt channel. This will stop a channel from playing. And if we put negative one in here, it'll stop all channels from playing. And this is returning, but we're not going to check it. So I want to put this in the place. I want this to happen before the, the smart pointers go out of scope. The smart pointers go out of scope. They're going to start deallocating their chunks. I want to stop the music playing before they go out of scope. So I'm going to put this in the deconstructor. And so far, we don't have one. So we're going to make a deconstructor. So up here in the class, we have our constructor here. Uh, well, it, the declaration of the constructor is there. And here's the declaration of the deconstructor. Okay, and then we'll go down here. We'll actually define it. Here is the constructor in the initializer list and, and the body of the constructor there. And this will be the deconstructor.
Okay, so this is our deconstructor, and the only thing that's going to be in here right now is going to be this. And I'm going to put a negative one in here. So it basically the deconstructor now is going to tell all channels to stop playing. And then after the de deconstructor is done, all these unique pointers are going to start cleaning up their memory. And this mix free chunk will now clean itself. And then after that is finished, the final thing is, is the, um, where is it? The, this gets called finally. So first the, ch the, the chunks stop playing, then the, then the chunks get freed, and then the mix audio um, closes, and then the, the mixer quits. So it's, it's being turned off in a reverse fashion. So we will be adding one more thing to the deconstructor later on. It'll be for the music, but that's just for the chunk. So I want it to kind of work in that fashion to always shut down the, the best way that it could possibly shut down. And my um, formatter probably changed the way that the deconstructor looks. It just did this. Uh, do, 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 expect it after this. Oh, right here. Okay. So that, that's just my formatter, just stuck it that way, that's fine. Okay, so that is everything about the playing the chunks. Now let's look about at music. Okay, so we have mix play channel, that was for playing a chunk. We have mix halt channel, that was for halting all the chunks that were playing. Now just like we did with the other one, we have mix load muse. The other one was load wave for a chunk. Mix load muse loads a mix music object. So we're going to need a smart pointer for this of type mix music. And the way that we clean it up was with mix free music. Okay. So those are the two things. We have the type for our, for our unique pointer of mix underscore music. And the deleter is going to be the mix underscore free music. So let's set that up. And the music file that we're playing here is Richard Stallman's free software song, the 8-bit version. He is the second lord and master be behind um, Bjorn, so that's the leader of the cult. Um, and this will be up here. Pointer. So this is mix music and we'll do the declare declare type will be mix free music and this one I'm just going to call it music. So that is setting up our smart pointer. We need to go down here now and initialize it to null. music no pointer and then this mix free music should be enough for that okay now in the load media we're going to load our song so let's look at that again so it's mix load muse it just takes the file and it's returning this Thing. So it's very simple. We're, we're just going to do a reset on that unique pointer and use this mixed load muse and the file. So I'm just going to grab the whole thing because it's going to be very simple. Okay, so this one is music reset. And this is mix load muse. And the file is actually in music, and it's a free software song, 8-bit, and it's also an AUG file. You can't see it on here, but it's an AUG file. Okay, so now we need to check it, make sure it's not um, null pointer. And we'll say error loading music. And it's still a mix get error. So that is going to load our music file. Okay. Let's continue on. 
So we have loaded a music file. But we've already put how to free it in our smart pointer. So this is how we play a music file. So it's mix play music. It takes in the file and then it takes in the loops. So it I don't think it says it down here. But if you put a negative one right here, it loops uh, forever. I, I think it says it on the chunk one, but it doesn't say it here. But um, you can tell it to loop, you know, zero times. It'll just play the file one time. One time it'll play the file one time and then loop one time. And if you just put a negative one here, it's going to loop indefinitely. It's just going to play forever, over and over again. And that's what we're going to do. And the we'll pass in the music file and or the music um, pointer and the the negative one there and this is we're going to check this one if it fails because the reason why we're doing this is this is not happening in the game loop this is going to happen before the game loop and it's not a sound effect that's happening really quick and passing by and can fail if we load too many of them up this is one sound file that is being started before the game loop it's a little bit more important so we're going to check failure on this one um, when we start playing it but um, the sound effects, we, we don't check those because those happen inside the game loop and they're very quick and they, they can fail. This one's a little bit more important if it does fail. Your whole music is not playing now. Okay, so, and we'll just wrap this in an if statement. Return zero on success and, and zero, negative one if it errors. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, again, start this music playing before the game loop starts. So we'll go to the run method for the run member function right here and basically the game loop is this while true so i'm going to put it right above that so and i'm going to wrap it at if statement say if there we go So we need our music, so it'll be this music, and we need to get the pointer from it. And then the second thing that we need is how many times we want it to loop. And we're going to say negative one, so it loops indefinitely. Now we need um, to have a an error message. I'll just grab this one here, it's the closest. Okay, so we'll say error playing music. And this will be a mix error. There we go. So that should be just fine. So I'm just going to play it for a minute, let it play, and then we're going to talk about pausing and stuff. But before I play it, I actually want to do what I did with the other one is in the deconstructor, I want to tell it to stop playing before the pointer frees it. So let's look at that real quick. So we have mix play music, and then there is mix halt music. And this is has no inputs, and this this is not used. It returns zero regardless, yeah. So, so we're just going to call this it just the way that we did in the deconstructor, just the way we did with the channels. Where, where is it? Uh, that's not it. Here it is. So here's the deconstructor. And we're just going to add this function in here. And it has no parameters. So this will make sure before our pointers start going out of scope that we have stopped playing all channels and we stop playing all music. And again, this isn't this isn't absolutely necessary. It's not going to error out or anything, but I just, this is the, a cleaner way to shut things down. You should just try to do your best job at, at writing code. So I'm just going to make sure that this music plays. It does take me a, a, a second to hear it because I'm listening to the Twitch stream. SDL. SDL. Okay, so that works. So now what, what I want to do is create a toggle to be able to mute the music from playing because it's playing indefinitely. It's, it's playing in an infinite loop. 
Okay, so let's close up some of these. We have mixed play music, we have mix halt music, we've taken care of those. Now we have these three functions here. We have mix paused with a D music, and this checks whether the music is playing or paused. Uh, returns one if music is paused and zero otherwise. So this is just saying, is the music paused? Okay. And then we have a mix pause music, and this one actually tells the music to pause. And we have a mix resume music. So we can use this, we can create a toggle with one of our event buttons, and we can just tell it to pause or unpause the music. So we could have made another member function, but I just stuck it straight into the event loop. You could do it either way. This is just a demo, so it's meant to be simple. So down here, we can add another case here, and we're, we're going to add an M, M for mute the music. So this will be SDL, and it'll be like the D, but it'll be an M. And I'm going to put a break on this right away. And right in here, we can check if it's paused, we'll resume it, else we'll pause it. But right, pause, yeah. Mix pause music. So this is getting our boolean. So if it's paused, we want to resume it. And we're not checking these for failure. We only check when we start playing the music for failure. This is just pausing and unpausing. It's not really stopping the music, it's pausing the music. It'll resume where it left off. There is a halt music, but we're not using that. We're just... And this one will be mix resume. Okay, so basically if, if, it's, if we press the M key, if it is paused, it's going to resume else it's going to pause. So it's going to do one or the other. And you, you could break this out into its own function, but again, this is just a simple demo, so it, it's okay. It's, it's, it's not getting bigger than this program. It's, this is already the end of it. Okay, so I do need to listen to it a little bit, so you're going to hear it a little bit before it gets paused, and then unpause it. And I'll pause it and unpause it a couple times so you can hear that it resumes. It doesn't restart the music. It resumes where it left off. Okay, so it was not working, so I think I've messed something up here. The pause wasn't working. So we have this K scan code M. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so I'm not sure what was going on. Um, let me just make sure I did compile the right code. That is in the source. Yes, that is correct. I'm going to put print statement or a, a C out. want to see what's happening here. Just make sure it's saved. Maybe I didn't compile it. I don't know. Oh, I probably didn't compile it. SDL. 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 Okay, so we know that this, um, the M is working because it's printing it, but it's not pausing. So 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this down. Pause. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm sure somebody's laughing at me right now. I'm I'm resuming and I'm resuming. Yeah, okay. This should be pause. Just double check that. SDL 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 Okay. That looks like it's working perfectly. So yeah, I I had resume in here on both sides of the if statement. So if it if it's paused, resume. If it's not paused, resume. You know, that, that didn't really work. But yeah, we, we can get rid of that. That was just a little print state debugging there. Okay, so let's make sure that we have everything else top set. We can run it through the, the little bit stricter compiler to see if it picks up anything, sound and effects. Let's just do that real quick. I'll just run it through this one just to see what this has to say. Still good. Let's play it. Unload it. Okay. It didn't detect anything. That doesn't mean it's perfect, but that's a, you know, it's a point in the right direction. Okay, so what did we do on this one? Well, we've added the SDL mixer, and we have gone down into the SDL initialize, initialize SDL, and we have initialized the mixer, and we've also opened an audio device. We are closing the audio device and shutting down the mixer here. Okay, and we're using those safe defaults that are defined in the header file, the default frequency, format, and channel. And we are using the 1024 for the chunk size, but you can change that if you hear crackling or if you think it's too delayed, you can make it smaller. If you hear crackling, make it bigger. Okay, so after that, we, ha we are going up and we, are, we have two chunk files and one music file. And so these are unique pointers, and their deleters are mix free chunk for the chunks and mix free music for the music file. We're setting all three of those to no pointer and setting their deleters. We are also um, created a, a deconstructor. We've also created a deconstructor that has the mix halt channel and also the mix halt music. And I think I put this in backwards order, but it actually doesn't matter at all. That would be up here as well. The deconstructor is declared there. It's defined, or did it, defined it here. So in the load media section is where we actually load these audio files. And we have the two sound effects here. We're using mix load wave to load our CPP aug and our SDL aug. And we're checking the, the pointers on failure. And for the music, we're using mix load muse and we're loading the music file and again checking that to play audio um, first we put it into the the um, the background color changer when we press spacebar the mix play channel negative one allows it to automatically pick a channel for you that's first available and that's the sound effect and that's how many times we loop it that's how you play a sound effect, and we're not checking for error because it could error, and it's not a big deal if it does error. And then in the update text, that bounce around the screen. Where, where did that go? Update, right, update text. And each one of these, when it changes direction, we are also telling it to play the SDL sound. And it's the exact same thing. So we also have the music, and what we've done here is right before the game loop starts, we're starting the music and we're putting it on an infinite loop and we are checking to see if it fails just the starting of the playing of the music but in the in the when we're checking events we also have the sdl scan code m the m button uh, the m key and we're checking if it's paused when that's pressed and if it is paused we're going to resume and if it's not paused we're going to pause it so it's a toggle so they're going to pause or unpause whenever we press the m key okay so and like I said, we are using that deconstructor to make sure that the all the sound is stopped playing before the smart pointers go out of scope and they start cleaning themselves. Then after that happens, the, the close SDL happens, and that closes the audio, quits the mixer, and then quits the rest of the stuff in reverse order. 
Okay. So that is how you play sound effects and how you play music and how you pause music with SDL2 and C++. I hope that was uh, enjoyable or possibly learned something. Um, we can make some games moving forward from this. I'm going to come back to C++ and we're, we're going to make different games with it. But this is just walking you through all the different things that you can kind of do with the basic things that you can do with C++. And again, this is a, just one long single file. Normally you would use multiple files and header files and everything else. But just because of the nature of this demo project, we're just keeping it in a single file. Okay, so again... Thank you for watching and bye.